Left ventricular hypertrophy, LVH, is thickening of the heart muscle of the left ventricle of the heart, that is, left-sided ventricular hypertrophy. Causes While ventricular hypertrophy occurs naturally as a reaction to aerobic exercise and strength training, it is most frequently referred to as a pathological reaction to cardiovascular disease, or high blood pressure. It is one aspect of ventricular remodeling. While LVH itself is not a disease, it is usually a marker for disease involving the heart. Disease processes that can cause LVH include any disease that increases the afterload that the heart has to contract against, and some primary diseases of the muscle of the heart. Causes of increased afterload that can cause LVH include aortic stenosis, aortic insufficiency, and hypertension. Primary disease of the muscle of the heart that cause LVH are known as hypertrophic cardiomyopathies, which can lead into heart failure. Long-standing mitral insufficiency also leads to LVH as a compensatory mechanism. Associated genes include OGN, osteoglycin. Diagnosis The principal method to diagnose LVH is echocardiography, with which the thickness of the muscle of the heart can be measured. The electrocardiogram, ECG, often shows signs of increased voltage from the heart in individuals with LVH, so this is often used as a screening test to determine who should undergo further testing. Echocardiography Two-dimensional echocardiography can produce images of the left ventricle. The thickness of the left ventricle as visualized on echocardiography correlates with its actual mass. Normal thickness of the left ventricular myocardium is from 0.6 to 1.1 cm, as measured at the very end of diastole. If the myocardium is more than 1.1 cm thick, the diagnosis of LVH can be made. ECG Criteria There are several sets of criteria used to diagnose LVH via electrocardiography. None of them is perfect, though by using multiple criteria sets, the sensitivity and specificity are increased. The Sokolilion Index S in V1 plus R in V5 or V6, whichever is larger, greater than or equal to 35 mm greater than or equal to 7, large squares. R in AVL greater than or equal to 11 mm. The Cornell voltage criteria for the ECG diagnosis of LVH involve measurement of the sum of the R wave in lead AVL and the S wave in lead V3. The Cornell criteria for LVH are S in V3 plus R in AVL 28 mm, men. S in V3 plus R in AVL 20 mm, women. The Romil Testis Point Score System, diagnostic greater than 5 points, probable 4 points. ECG Criteria Points Voltage Criteria, any of R or S in limb leads greater than or equal to 20 mm. S in V1 or V2 greater than or equal to 30 mm. R in V5 or V6 greater than or equal to 30 mm. 3. STT abnormalities. STT vector opposite to QRS without digitalis. STT vector opposite to QRS with digitalis. 3. 1. Negative terminal P mode in V1 1 mm in depth and 0.04 SEC in duration, indicates left atrial enlargement. 3. Left axis deviation, QRS of minus 30 degrees or more, 2. QRS duration greater than or equal to 0.09 SEC1. Delayed intrinsicoid deflection in V5 or V6, greater than 0.05 SEC1. Other voltage-based criteria for LVH include lead I, R wave 14 mm. Lead AVR, S wave 15 mm. Lead AVL, R wave 12 mm. Lead AVF, R wave 21 mm. Lead V5, R wave 26 mm. Lead V6, R wave 20 mm. Treatment 
The enlargement is not permanent in all cases, and in some cases the growth can regress with the reduction of blood pressure. LVH may be a factor in determining treatment or diagnosis for other conditions. For example, LVH causes a patient to have an irregular ECG. Patients with LVH may have to participate in more complicated and precise diagnostic procedures, such as imaging, in situations in which a physician could otherwise give advice based on an ECG. Please subscribe and thanks for watching.